First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 29 through 36. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads like this. Watch this, y'all. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his presence. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell all the nations the Lord reigns. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God, our salvation. Gather and rescue us from among the nations. So we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel who lives from everlasting to everlasting. And watch this, and all of the people shouted, amen, and praised the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you sin beside me for a reason. Oh, look at your other neighbor and tell your neighbor, didn't you hear the scripture? The scripture said, let all the people shout amen. So if you're not gonna shout today, I'm gonna give you permission right now to go ahead and move your seat. If you're not gonna give God what he deserves, I need you to move. Watch this, y'all, it's in verse 29. As simple as this. Clyde, the text said, give to the Lord the glory he deserves. <laughs> I want to preach from the thought, give him what he deserves, y'all. Just, just give him what he deserves deserves let us pray father we thank you for yet another glorious opportunity to worship your name God if the truth be told none of us should be here because the Bible declares for the wages of sin is death but because of your gift God your gift of eternal life we are all still here and we can thank you God that we've been redeemed and so father we ask oh God that your Holy Spirit will fill this place touch my neighbor to my left and to my right and touch me so that we might be able to receive because faith comes by hearing and hearing by your word in Jesus name amen you may be seated it's the holiday seasons and we are preparing to celebrate and spend time with family. Thousands of turkeys have made the ultimate sacrifice, given their lives so that we can gather with the people that we love. All over the country, Sister Time, people of all walks of life will be consuming stovetop stuffing, cranberry sauce, macaroni and cheese, potato salad, Candid yams, Smithfield ham. Some turkeys will be baked to perfection. But if you know like I know, some of them will be fried until the juiciest meat you have ever tasted is falling off the bones. The dessert table will be overflowing with coconut custard pies and sweet potato pies and Pound cakes and banana pudding and some bread pudding, some with custard on the top and some with nuts and some without. And oh yes, what would this season be without some eggnog? Some of us will add some ingredients to the eggnog to give it a little more kick. We 
will sit around the table and reminisce over the past and most of us will leave the moment tight with our slacks unbuttoned to give us a little room to sit down to drive home. But the reality is, aside from getting together with family, this season was put together by the pilgrims to be thankful for where they had come from, what was taking place presently, and what will take place in the future. It's amazing to me, however, that a special day had to be set aside once a year for people to be thankful for what the Lord has done. I don't know about y'all, but I don't need a special day to be reminded of what the Lord has done for me. I don't have to travel back far in my mind to retrieve evidence of what the Lord has done. In fact, all I have to do is think about this morning. When I opened up my eyes and I still knew my name and where I was, all I have to do is think about just a few hours ago. I was able to walk to the bathroom on my own two feet. Is there anybody else in the room this morning that will declare that you don't need a special day on the calendar in November to be thankful? Because each and every day, every time we turn around, the Lord just keeps on blessing us. Can you do me a favor and high five your neighbor and tell them, I don't know about you, but I have so much to be thankful for oh that neighbor didn't like it look at your other neighbor and tell them God should have given up on me a long time ago but he still looks beyond all of my faults and he still sees to my needs is there anybody in here who will give God praise this morning because God has brought you from a mighty long way the old folks would put it like this he picked me up and he turned me around he placed my feet on solid ground. I wish I had somebody in here who will give God your best praise because God has given me more than I ever could deserve. And because he has been so good to me, I have made up in my mind, I'm going to give him what he deserves. Oh, y'all still ain't caught it. Is there anybody on this side of the church that will just rest on your feet and say, God, I'm going to give you what you deserve. You deserve everything I got, and you deserve my best praise. Is there anybody on this side of the church that will stand to your feet and declare, God, if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't even be here right now. You deserve everything. It's amazing to me that watch this oftentimes some people have to be prompted to praise God when the reality is that should want to be one of the most automatic things that happen in your life because God is the author and the finisher of your faith and what I have learned in this season, Sean, is I have to be thankful, not only for all the good stuff, but I got to be thankful for whatever I go through. Because God is orchestrating something inside of me that, watch this, he has a plan for my life to go to the next season. And God is trying to check your heart to see where you are and if you qualify to go to the next season. So watch this. So if you decide not to give him what he deserves, maybe then you might get what you deserve. Okay, I'm trying to help us real quick. Don't want to hold us long, Rob, but watch this. In this text, y'all, Ezra is having a conversation with the people of God, and he is reminding them to give the Lord the glory that he deserves. It's crazy, y'all, how at times we all have to be reminded to give God praise. But that's why David declared, I will bless the Lord at all all times and his praises shall watch this continually be in my mouth because if I got praise in my mouth if I constantly lift God up out of my mouth then I won't have room in my mouth to say something I shouldn't be saying if I'm if I'm constantly giving him glory there is no room in my mouth for stuff that shouldn't even be there watch this because you and I have the propensity to forget what the Lord has done in the midst of our trials and tribulations. Watch this, Tasha. The enemy is so tricky because he will try to use our turbulent seasons to somehow cause us to overlook our good seasons. 
Uh, here it is. There are times when we all take for granted and underestimate the magnitude of what God has done and is doing and will do in our lives. Okay, but when such times occur, according to this text, we have to recognize how good God has been to us and give him the thanks and the praise that he deserves. Okay, um, if the truth be told, some of us should be praising him even more. Okay. okay, because some of us, he had to do a little bit more for than the next person. But everybody in here is not going to be transparent and declare, boy, I praise God like I do because you don't know what God brought me through. Oh, God, I've been to some places where I shouldn't have made it out of. But by the grace of God, I am still here. So even if you don't praise him, I'll praise him all by myself. I can praise him in Walmart when I'm paying for groceries because there was a day when I had no money for groceries. I can praise him at the gas station because there was a time when I had no gas money. I can praise him when I put my key in the door because there was a time when I had my own crib. I wish I had at least 50 worshipers in the building that will declare I got reason. You don't have to look far to understand you got something to praise God for. Okay, okay. If you're driving something with a crooked L on it, you should never miss an opportunity to praise him. Okay, okay. When I was growing up, when I was growing up, um, my daddy made sure that me and my brother understood that things were not just going to be given to you. And so my dad did not go to the dealership and buy me and my brother a car. My dad, when it got me and my brother, a 1969 Malibu Classic. In 1984, this car took $30 to fill up. But y'all know how we used to do back in the day. We only put enough gas in it for the trip we were going on. But he didn't give us anything. He made us work for it. But watch this. But when he gave it to us, we had, watch this, had to look at the fact that while we were driving to school, we were passing the folk that we used to walk with. Might be in the Malibu, but at least I ain't walking. Somebody should have caught that. Anybody been delivered from your bus pass? Anybody been delivered in here where God has finally gave you your own? You better praise God like you lost your mind because God has been better to you than you've been to yourself. He might not have gave you a Benz, but he gave you a Toyota. Might not gave you a Bentley, but you got a Honda in the driveway. Do I have anybody in the building that'll say, God, I thank you for everything I got? You got to be able to thank God for a little bit of stuff. Yesterday, Chris, yesterday, I wore a sweater to my training. We trained the leaders yesterday. I wore this sweater that had been in my closet for two years. It was brand new. It was brand new. The first time I put on it, it looked like I had on a halter top. It, it, it was tucked. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But yesterday when I put it on, God said, I couldn't let you wear it then because I want to see you now. Because God will let you go through some seasons where you can see what he has done. Y'all ain't got to praise God for me. I praise him myself. If you look at the silhouette, it ain't nobody but God. Can I get at least 10 of y'all in here that'll say, God, you will show me where you brought me from. Anybody here ever been there where God will show you your journey so you can see how he has
Ezra said, give him what he deserves. Problem is, we want everything we don't deserve, but don't want to give him what he deserves. We want righteousness, imputed righteousness. We don't deserve it, but he give it to us. And we find it hard to give him praise. He has given us redemption, and we find it hard to just wave our hand. But when God has delivered you from some stuff, you don't need a coach in the building to tell you to open up your mouth. In fact, you got to move on your own because it's a fire shut up in your body that just won't let you sit still. Can I get a witness in the building? There's some on the inside of me that won't let me. It won't let me sit still. Watch this. Sister Loretta. Sister Loretta is in worship today. You all right? When I showed up to the hospital to see her, she said, Pastor, you got to see this. They got tubes running from here. They got tubes running from here. She said, I can't even hear. I say, Sister Loretta, I see your tubes. But guess what else? I see you. I see your tubes. But I see you too. You still here. I called her last week. She got to have surgery. The enemy tried to step in and put fear in her heart because of what she got to go through. But what I have learned is, is that when you thank God for what's on the horizon, when you thank him in advance for where you're getting ready to go to, God has a way of not only blessing you, but blessing everybody around you. Loretta, you are a walking testimony because what happened to you could have taken you out. But look at you in worship today, able to give God praise. Can I get a hundred of y'all that'll praise God for her? That'll say, God, we declare by faith that she is made whole. Renee, oftentimes when we go through stuff, many of us will use that as an excuse to stay home. But what I've learned is, is if I could get, just get to the church house, you just never know what God is going to do in the atmosphere. Anybody here that just ever had a chance to be in that place where you say, you know what? I got to get in there today because if I could just make it into the house, something extraordinary is going to happen and change my life. Watch this, y'all. Here it is. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Watch this, y'all. The relevant question is, how do I give God what he deserves? How do I give somebody something that has everything? I had somebody tell me uh, the other day, well, Pastor, I know you're going to graduate, all this stuff, but we don't know what to get you. You got everything. What? I can think of some things I don't have. <laughs> That you could give me. But watch this, y'all. What God showed me is you got to understand a person and know him in order to be able to give him what he deserves. If you really know God, if you really have a relationship with him, you would already know that he created us to worship him. If I already know that, then I already know some of the stuff he deserves already. But watch this, y'all. How do I give God what he deserves? Ah, little bro, it's crazy because when football come on today, whole lot of folk going to be yelling and screaming. 
around the TV with some dudes in some tights on. We're going to be yelling and screaming around the TV. Fussing. Come on, let's keep it real. Some of y'all going to be cussing. Over a team that even if they lose their game check is more than what many of us make in 10 years. Can you imagine going to the bank with a $300,000 check and saying, uh, uh, Miss Banker, can you, I want to deposit $250,000. Give me $50,000 for spending money. Y'all can't imagine that. I want to. I, uh, in fact, I'm trying to right now. I want that issue. But watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. After all he has given us, he has given us more than we deserve. If we're going to give God what he deserves, we have to point one. Here it is. Give him compound contribution. Oh, God. Watch this, y'all. It's, it's in the text. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Watch this. He's breaking it down for you. Bring your offering and come into his presence. He already gave you two things. Then he said, worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Watch this. Ezra says in verse 29, Give the Lord glory that he deserves. Then he, when he, he asked the question how, he says, catch this. Bring your offering. Come into his presence. Being thankful requires, watch this, more than a verbal offering of thanks. Boy, I lost a couple of y'all right there. A couple of y'all cut me off. I'm going to say it again. Being thankful, Brother Odom, listen to it. Being thankful requires more than a verbal offering of thanks. Being thankful requires that we give him an offering and watch this and come into his presence. Online, online watches don't, don't, don't trip. Don't trip. Watch this. He says, and come into his presence, Romans 12 and 1 declares, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Can you look at your name and tell your neighbor, if you don't know what to give him, you got to give him everything. Because he gave you everything. Some of y'all missed that. You got to give him everything because he gave you everything. Okay, okay. Malachi 3 and 10 declares, Katricia, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Then he says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Anybody in the building want to be there one day where God just opens up the window and pour you out one blessing you can't handle? Watch this. In other words, because of all that the Lord has done in our lives, he deserves a, a compound contribution. Um, Y'all, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. Um, God has called me to be a preacher. It was never anything that I desired to do. Um, in fact, you couldn't have told me that in the fifth grade, sixth grade, ninth grade, even in the twelfth grade, that I would be somebody standing with a microphone in my hand um, because I was used to having other things in my hand. Um, uh, so that went over some of y'all here. Um, but I ain't ashamed of my testimony. You might be ashamed of yours. But I'll tell you that I used to have Red Bull 40 ounces in my hand. I I'll tell you that I used to have some other stuff in my hand. Oh. Okay, this side didn't like it. Um, I used to have some other stuff in my hand. I used to be in the same crowd that was puff, puff. 
I used to be in that same crowd, but 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 well, watch this, y'all. When, when when I come to the understanding of who God is, I know what I'm supposed to do. In other words, y'all, I realize that I got to give God a compound blessing back because God has always compounded me. Um, because watch this, God gives me more than just life. He don't just wake me up in the morning. He then gives me food. Uh, he don't just give me food, Tyrese. He then gives me clothes on my back. He don't just give me clothes on my back, but then he gives me health and strength to be able to go and do everything that I, uh, that I do each and every day. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? He gives you a compound blessing, but it's hard for us to give him one blessing. Trying to help us. Watch this. This weekend, y'all, I had to go to this event. With all that I got going on, I'm got to study for this exam. I, I'm trying to get out of school. I'm trying to finish. I got all this stuff. I got to be at the church to teach at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to do all this stuff. And then someone calls and says, I need you to come and speak at this event. It's a benefit. I need you to come and just say a word. Tell all these women in this room about what a man deserves and what a man wants. Oh, some of y'all went like this already. That, some of y'all went, went side-eyed on me already. Y'all went side-eyed on me already, but, but I said either this is going to go real good or this is going to go real bad. Either they're going to listen or they're going to have a mouthful for me after I finish. But watch this, y'all. Went there to the hubs 757 with all that I had going on. I had training with our leaders, volunteers yesterday, and now I'm in the pulpit preaching today. The event at the hub 757, watch this, y'all, was a benefit moment for breast cancer awareness. My mama died from cancer uh, just a little over a year ago. So when I, they called me, y'all, you need to look at your name and tell them there weren't any envelopes given out that night because watch this. Then in our meeting, many of the leaders include myself we sold seeds to help with the cost of this event I don't know about y'all but Jesus deserves all that I have because if it had not been for him we would not have made it this far and if it hadn't been for him y'all I wouldn't have had the strength to do what I did but every now and then you got to recognize that you got to do some stuff in a compound way it's more than just raising your hand it's more than just saying, God, I thank you. You got to be compounded in how you think in terms of what you give God. Knew it won't go get that many shouts, Gerald, but that's cool. If we are going to give God what he deserves, we have to give him point to a collaborative praise. It's in the text. This might ruffle some feathers because some of us in the crowd are amongst the people who think that it doesn't take all that. It don't take all that running. It don't take all that shouting. It don't take all of that animation stuff. It don't take all of that. But if you've been through what I've been through, that's the reason why I'm so animated today. Because God has been so big in my life, my praise is going to be big wherever I am. Anybody ever been in Walmart and God reminded you that there was a day when you couldn't buy your food? And while you're trying to hand your money to the cashier, you just break into a praise and say, God, I just want to give you glory. And the cashier step back. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Text says, let the heavens be glad. And the earth rejoice. Tell the nations the Lord reigns. In other words, y'all, you got to get to a point where you tell somebody what he's done. I love, I love, I love what God is doing in my brother's life now. Yesterday, y'all, I went to pick Sean up. He said, man, I, I, I need to go to Tommy Hilfiger. It's okay, you ready? Because he's waiting on you. I go get him, Trish. We ride, you know how it is. Before we could get in the car, somebody was in their car. I had to sit there for seven minutes <clears throat> while he was talking to the lady in her car. <laughs> but you know how Sean put that smile on his face and you know he's engaged in the conversation when he leaned in on you. And he leaned in on, I say, oh boy, let me put the car in park. <laughs> and I could just see him, watch this, telling this story. And I could see her receiving what he was saying. And then I saw them give each other the biggest hug because she connected with what was going on in his life. Somebody is waiting to hear what has happened in your life for you to give them a reason to 
to keep on fighting. I wish I had some soldiers in the building that will declare that's why I can't keep still. That's why I got to open my mouth and tell somebody my story. I got to give him what he deserves. I got to tell somebody how good God has been. So I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to tell my story till y'all get sick of hearing about it. I'm going to tell my story to people I don't even know. Because watch this. They don't have to know me. They just got to know who's in me. Anybody in the building feel like that? That when they get to know who's inside of me. Here it is. Watch this, y'all. Let me hurry up and get out of here. Watch this. Text says, let the trees. Woo! This is crazy, Jacoby. He's speaking to the people. But then watch this. He says, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell all the nations the Lord reigns. Then he starts talking to water. Gerald, why is he talking to water that's not going to talk back? He says, let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. That's crazy to me. Never seen a fish shout. Never seen a crab shout. Seen him try to get out the pot. I ain't never heard him shout. Watch this. He says, let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. It's interesting how Ezra lists all of these things and places to give God thanks after he tells us in verse 29, give the Lord the glory he deserves. He says, let heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell the nation the Lord reigns. Let the sea and everything in it shout. Let the fields and their crops burst with joy. Let the trees in the forest sing for joy. How can these inanimate things give him what he deserves? How can these things that don't have the ability to reason and think give God what he deserves? Glad you asked. They give by producing what they were created to produce. The trees praise him by yielding fruit. The fields glorify him by producing crops. The sea magnifies him by giving up seafood and providing a means of transportation. You and I praise him when we walk by faith and stand upright before him. You and I give him glory when everything we do is to give him glory. Some of y'all missed that. We give him glory when we produce what he needs. Okay, when we tell somebody what the Lord has done, and how good he is. We give him glory when we produce the fruit from the seeds that have been sown in our lives. That's why the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name. Y'all ain't gonna catch this. That's why I'm always helping us to understand when two or three are gathered, he says, everybody supposed to be praising. That's why I can't sit beside somebody that won't give God praise because I need somebody to connect their energy with my energy so that we can fill the atmosphere with the right energy. I need somebody that'll help me praise them when I almost can't praise them myself. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, can can you praise him with me just for 60 seconds? Can you lift up holy hands just for 60 seconds? Can you open up your mouth and say, God, I give you glory. I wish I had a church in here that would applaud God. Watch this. Watch this. We get ready to go. Don't sit down. Come on, stand up. Come on, stand up. We ready to get out of here. Watch this, y'all. If we're going to give God what he deserves, there is also a time, Jeff, where he challenges our holiness. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Bible says that we should worship him in spirit and in truth. Bible says that we have to live holy before him. Um, there will be times in life that God will challenge our holiness. Antoinette, watch this. I'm going to show it to you. Send a text. Then we're going to get out of here. Watch this. In verses 34 and 35, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. He is faithful over, uh, he's, his faithful love endures forever. Watch this, y'all. He just said, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. But then in verse 35, he says, Cry out, save us. He says, After y'all celebrated, still cry out. Save us, O God of our salvation. Gather and rescue us from among the nations so we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. In this text, y'all, in verse 34, I'm gritty out of here. Give me a second. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Then he doubles back and says, cry out. Save us. In other words, while you are thanking me for what I have done, don't forget that even though we are in relationship, we still have to make sure that we stay free. Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of his glory. The Bible says, as it is written, there are none righteous. No, not one. While we are praising him, make sure we are still processing through salvation. In other words, just because you got it right yesterday don't mean that you're not going to make a mistake today. Just because you know some scriptures don't make you more holy than your neighbor. Just because you got you didn't get caught doing some stuff don't mean you ain't do it. Everybody in here has reason to praise him. Everybody in here has fallen short of his glory. Everybody in here has done some things that we don't want nobody else to know about. Everybody in here got some skeletons in our closets. God knows I don't want y'all to find the key to my door. Okay, I'm not, see, being transparent is something that God has made me do. I don't like it. But I'll be honest with you, I don't want y'all to find the key to my door. But you know what I'm glad about Tyrese? I've been washed by the blood of the lamb. Anybody else in the building that, that would just give God praise because you've been washed? And now when God looks at you, he'll see you. He sees Jesus.